Another COVID-19 variant named Omicron is said to be the cause for the surge in cases in the Philippines and globally. There's been a lot of discussion about this new variant. And from what we know so far, it's highly transmissible, meaning each person infected is infecting more than one person faster, resulting in an explosion of cases. But the good news is early studies show that Omicron is causing milder symptoms than previous variants. We also now have more tools at our disposal to deal with this variant than we did with past variants in 2020. Today, we'll talk to experts who will give us a guide to this new variant and what we can do to protect ourselves as well as others. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Our goal here on the program is to help you better understand the care you need and deserve. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. COVID-19 infections in the country have risen at an unprecedented rate with a very high positivity way above the World Health Organization's 5% benchmark. Our guests today will tell us everything they know about this new variant. So let's welcome our guest for today. With us is Dr. Alex Huson, who is an infectious disease specialist from the Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, as well as the Binyan Doctors' Hospital. Also joining us is Dr. Ana Gia Limpoco, who is a family medicine specialist at Manila Doctors Hospital and the Philippine General Hospital. First identified in South Africa in November, the Omicron variant has surged around the world faster than any previous known variant. Now, Omicron spreads more easily than others, as studies show, but the current severity of illness and death associated with it is still, for the most part, unclear. Dr. Alex, I'll start with you. Why does Omicron spread faster than other variants? like the Delta variant. The Omicron variant has many mutations in the viral genetic makeup. So, marami siyang mga mutations that makes it more transmissible. So, it can infect more than the usual or the native COVID virus that we knew. And these mutations usually gives the property of the virus to escape the immune system, meaning hindi siya nadetect agad ng immune system, therefore causing reinfection of those previously infected and those who already received COVID vaccinations. What do we know so far about the severity of Omicron? Kapag ibig sabihin ba, mas maraming mutations ang Omicron kumpara sa Delta, ay mas delikado ito. Kumaga, a lot of people are thinking, mas malaki ba ang pangil ng Omicron variant? We already have some experiences from the South Africa and many European countries about Omicron variant. So, and the, almost the same experience that they have, we are also experiencing now. Based on the latest statistics, yung mga cases ng Omicron, madami lang siya talaga kasi very transmissible compared from previous variants. Pero yung mga nakakaroon ng severe and critical disease ay much more less compared doon sa mga ibang variants like Delta. Now, a number of Omicron cases are obviously uh, already present here in the country. Pero how is this driving the spike in infections, Dr. Alex? It's very transmissible, way beyond the transmissibility property of the previous variant. So what the impact of this variant is that many people get sick. And since this is rather new, Unlike the, for example, we have the flu in the past, COVID in still quarantine and isolation, it really affects the normal daily behavior like work. And also, if we have a lot of cases, even though it's mild, they all go to the hospital and they try to consult because they need one, they need consultation. So kung sobrang dami, kahit di naman siya talagang mild, it can still affect the daily hospital operations. Since the beginning of 2022, Cases of COVID-19 have risen sharply. Dr. Anna, how worried should we be about the rise of COVID-19 cases? Based on previous experiences, there are probably reports na in two to three months talaga makikita natin yung peak nito. So if we started like January, siguro we can still see a peak until March, no? So based on the previous experiences. Meron bang mga symptoms na kakaiba na nakita lang natin dito sa Omicron? In terms of the symptoms, uh, it still refers to the upper respiratory tract uh, symptoms, no? So 
by experience, what we commonly see right now for patients, mas marami ang nagpipresent with sore throat, cough and colds pa rin. Some may or may not have fever, but yun yung mga symptoms pertaining to the upper respiratory tract. So mm-hmm. parang yun yung nakikita namin ngayon in clinics na common sa mga nagpapacheck up. Compared to the previous ones na may cough and cold pa rin, may sneezing, etc., not so common on the sore throat. But still, meron pa rin kaming questions about may anosmia ba? Ibig sabihin, may pangamoy ba? Or may panglasa ba yung pasyente? So, these are the things that we must check no? and also advise our patients to monitor or to look into, lalo na when they start to have uh, these symptoms. This new variant seems to have a shorter incubation period. This means that after a person is exposed, it takes as few as two or even three days for them to develop symptoms, becoming contagious, and they will test positive as compared to four to even six days sometimes with the Delta variant. Some studies point out that a person is infectious even before they develop symptoms. Now, for most people, Omicron appears to result in mostly mild to moderate illness that can resemble the common cold or the flu. Dr. Anna, pag ito yung mga simptomas sa pangkaraniwan, does this mean na hindi aabot sa severe illness ang merong Omicron? When we say, uh, pag meron na tayong cough and cold or, this, or all these symptoms, I would agree na kailangan mag-quarantine ka na and then have yourself checked by the doctor. Magpa-test kung kailangan. Now, there's a caveat for here. Uh, kailangan yung mga may comorbids, sila sana yung mga ma-prioritize na mapatest natin. Why? Because this are the vulnerable ones that pwedeng magkaroon or mag-progress into a moderate to severe COVID regardless of the variant. So meaning ito yung mga elderly, may hypertension, may diabetes, or may other conditions that may potentially be affected at pwedeng mag-progress into moderate severe COVID. So kahit Delta man yan or Omicron variant pa yan. When we return, we'll talk about how effective the current vaccines are against Omicron. We're your connection to healthcare. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk. With a sharp rise in cases, one of the most important questions today is, do the current vaccines work against the Omicron variant? I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk. We're together in health. Dr. Alex, why do vaccinated people still get infected if they are already vaccinated, sometimes even boosted? Nagkakasakit pa rin. Isang sinasabi na possible reason is that the idea of immune escape, meaning this Omicron variant, na nagkatago sila doon sa immune system. Meaning, kahit na nabakunahan na, meron pa rin chances na yung mga antibodies na naproduce ay hindi ma-detect agad yung Omicron variant. So, yun yung nagiging dahilan why those people na fully vaccinated, others are even already boosted, no? magkakaroon pa rin sila ng Omicron variant. Pero still, if you are fully vaccinated, receive booster doses, Definitely, the chances of getting severe illness is mababa talaga. Dr. Ana, alam na ba natin uh, for sure how does Omicron affect naman yung mga unvaccinated uh, people? Well, it's the same thing with all the other variants for COVID-19. So, whether or not yung mga variants natin out there for COVID-19 sa mga taong hindi vaccinated, there's really a potential that the disease may progress into something moderate or severe. The thing is, when we do the RT-PCR testing, hindi naman yan na-identify right there and then if this is Omicron or not mm-hmm. until we do genome sequencing. One of the most common vaccines used in the country is Sinovac. Dr. Alex, is it effective ang Sinovac against Omicron? Yung mga nabigyan ng Sinovac, effective pa din siya against Omicron. Especially kung pag-iusapan natin is yung pag-decrease or pagbaba ng chances of getting severe and critical COVID. When it comes to boosters, is it okay na parehong brand kung Sinovac ang primary series ko, booster ko Sinovac? Or should I look for another type of booster? There are evidence na after some time, yung mga antibodies nag decrease So, for example, if you get Sinovac for your primary dose, may study po nagsasabi na 
better po ang magiging effect pagdami ng antibodies if you receive another type of vaccine or what we call as the heterologous vaccination. So for example, yung una mo, Sinovac, then for your booster dose, you will be receiving other brands, Pfizer or Moderna. Mas maganda po yung boosting. What can you say about those who are, hindi natin maiwasan yun, medyo takot because they received a certain brand of vaccines and they're really out there to probably get another set, another series of two doses. What can you uh, suggest with this? That will be a case-to-case -case basis then. Uh, we have to check prior to vaccination kung ano ba yung naging reaction. Probably the person had a severe adverse reaction with the previous vaccine. Kaya mm. ganun yung kanyang experience and doesn't want to have the same similar reaction as well. That's why pwedeng another set of vaccines yung mabigay sa kanya. Dr. Anna, can at-home test kits be used to detect infection? And uh, syempre, marami nagtatanong yung accuracy ng mga test kits na available uh, sa market ngayon? As we speak, siguro no, may listing naman ng FDA kung ano yung mga approved talaga. But I have to remind the people that when we do the home test kit, dapat trained yung gagawa niyan. Hindi pwedeng basta lang you do parang the usual test lang. Healthcare provider ang gagawa ng test sa inyo. That's one. Number two is, kailangan alam kailan ba gagawin ang test na ito kasi may timing din yan. And then number three, we have to also think of how to properly dispose it. So if you are not as sure of those things, better to ask your doctor or any healthcare provider before doing that uh, home test kits yourselves. Kapag nag-positive sa any of these tests, RT-PCR or uh, home antigen tests, anong dapat gawin ng ating mga viewers? First step ay mag-isolate na agad. Then, syempre, uh, mag-consult po sa doctor para malaman po yung mga tamang medications that you will be taking in Wag po tayo basta magiinom ng mga medications na walang payo ng doktor. Kasi, for example, hindi naman po lahat ay perfectly well. Marami po sa mga patients ay mayroong mga iba't ibang mga health issues. May hypertension or diabetes. So, there will be some peculiarities in managing this patient. So, mm -hmm. the best is to still consult your doctor. You know, these home test kits are, in one end, very convenient for them. It gives them some information. But what can you say about how they should treat that information? Because I'm sure, konting sore throat lang, konting ubo lang, gusto nilang magpa-test kagad. The most accurate pa rin is doing the RT-PCR. So when you do your home test kit at home, no, at let's say marunong naman talaga kayo, and it turns out to be positive, most likely when you do the RT-PCR, positive rin yan. But then again, no, I have to warn everybody na mm -hmm. kailangan trained yung gagawa niyan. The second point that I want to emphasize is that if you are symptomatic and if you have comorbidities, magpa-RT-PCR na kayo. Huwag na mag-home test kit. Despite new variants, the spread of COVID-19 can be prevented by following safety protocols and adopting a healthy lifestyle. We'll talk about this and more when we return. Your health is our mission. This is Metalk Health Talk. We'll be right back. COVID-19 is still here, which is why knowing and following safety protocols is still a must. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk, where your care always comes first. Even if Omicron causes less severe disease, uh, according to studies, it shouldn't be dismissed as mild. The number of cases can overwhelm the healthcare system and cause many, many problems. We must continue to protect ourselves and protect each other. Dr. Anna, please walk us through the tips on how to keep ourselves COVID-free. I have to emphasize yung safety precautions natin, hand washing, uh, physical distancing, social distancing, following the protocols. If you're symptomatic, mag-quarantine ka na kaagad and then have yourself checked as well. And then also yung wearing, properly wearing of masks. Yan, importante. Dr. Alex, when it comes to masks, ano yung most effective mask? Dati, nung Delta, okay na yung cloth mask was deemed okay because of the shortages of masks. But when it comes to Omicron, ano yung pinaka-effective na mask na dapat meron tayo? About masking, ang pinaka-okay for the general public pa din is the surgical mask that we, yung merong blue sa labas, white sa loob. So, 
ang transmission naman is still droplet. Eh. So, ang talagang best pa din para sa general public ay yung blue mask. Dr. Alex, yung pagdodouble mask, is this now the norm? Is this uh, still recommended? No, hindi naman kailangan na double masking. No? Uh, hindi pa yan talaga ina-advocate sa ngayon kasi nga uh, droplet ang transmission ng COVID. Eh. So, single mask, properly worn, uh, worn correctly, and disposed properly will really be enough for protecting us against COVID. Aside from following safety protocols, keeping your immune system strong is one of the ways we can protect ourselves from COVID-19. Dr. Anna, what are some of the things that we should do daily in order to keep ourselves healthy? Eat well, sleep well, hand washing, take your vitamins, take uh, medications if you have maintenance medications, and then always protect yourself, no? keep yourself protected by wearing the mask properly, mm -hmm. hand washing, physical social distancing then. So I think those are the things na kailangan. It's part of our day-to-day -day living already. Many people feel that since mostly mild ang cases ng Omicron, people should just get infected naturally and get it over with, kung tawagin. Dr. Alex, what is the danger in this form of thinking? Very dangerous yung gagawin mo kung naisip mo na magpahawa ka na lang para tapos na. No? Number one, if we do this, especially among the unvaccinated, yung new variant pwede pa rin mag-develop. Pwede ikaw yung maging next na incubation person kung saan pwede magkaroon ng bagong variant ng COVID. No? So another one is that still Delta variant is still here. So one cannot choose which variant they can get infected with. So kung Omicron tapos mild, okay, better, uh, thanks God. Pero kung wow, Delta, ma machempuhan ka, then, then mag-develop ka ng severe disease, then yun. Now, Dr. Anna, here's a question that uh, I'm sure a lot may be experiencing now, and it has something to do with children being infected with COVID-19. So what are some advice that you can give for those parents who are negative, pero yung anak nila positive? If there's a family member who has positive COVID, kailangan naka-isolate siya, but if you are living in the same household, lahat kayo, lalo na yung parents taking care of the children, pwede naka-mask naman yan. Mm -hmm. And then just observe proper hand washing, no? Social distancing, pwede namang uh, pag feed yung bata kung kaya naman niyang kumain, basta nakabantay ka lang sa kanya. Mm -hmm. And then, continue yung vitamin supportive treatment, hydrate the child kasi kailangan well hydrated pa rin siya. And give medications as uh, prescribed by the doctor. Of course, constant monitoring or uh, coordination with your medical provider or your pediatrician or family physician is needed para mag-guide yung parents in taking care of their child na may COVID. Dr. Alex, when it comes to boosters, balik tayo sa mga boosters uh, sandali, ano? Um, a lot of people may be in isolation or quarantine because of uh, being infected with COVID and they are probably due for their booster shots. Anong advice mo sa timing? Kailan ba sila dapat magka-booster shot? Pwede bang right after isolation or should there be a gap? The best is to prepare your body. So physically, kailangan makarecover ka muna from the COVID infection even if it's mild. So after siguro um, one to two weeks that you're okay, then you're due for booster doses, then pwede na. Pero pag Doc Alex, pag asymptomatic naman yung positive siya, asymptomatic, natapos na yung isolation, uh, pwede na ba siya magpa-booster dose right away after isolation? Kung asymptomatic naman at okay naman siya, pwede na po. Once okay. okay na ang isolation. So this discussion was very helpful. Thank you, infectious disease specialist Dr. Alex Huson and family medicine specialist Dr. Ana Gia Limpoco. We continue to live in the age of COVID-19 and we may not totally eradicate it, but experts say that we'll see it move out of the pandemic phase into the endemic phase at some point where its impact will come down to more manageable levels. But until this happens, let's keep doing our part in limiting the damage of this latest surge and protect ourselves and those around us. Stay safe, everyone. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines.